Hi, my name is Madison, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Brompton M3L. There's a variety of different Bromptons. There's the Brompton S line, which is the flat sport handlebar, the M line, the most classic bar, and then the H bar, which is the highest bar. I think they've also got a touring bar that looks like a, kind of a double D or double P shaped handlebar for touring. Um, the bike that worked for me was the M3R, that's the mid-range handlebar height, the three-speed uh, internal hub, and then the R is the rear rack, which allows it to roll on the rear rack, makes it a little bit easier to push with the easy wheels. I bought this bike back in 2013 in San Francisco at a bike shop called Huckleberry Bikes, linked below. Great bike shop, highly recommend them if you want to do a custom order and you're near San Francisco. I now live in Louisville, Kentucky, so you might ask why I have a Brompton in Louisville, Kentucky. Great question. Um, when we bought them uh, in San Francisco, it was for obvious reasons, the subway. We wanted to fold the bikes up and take them with us. My biggest realization upon moving back to Louisville, Kentucky, is there's still a lot of reasons to have a folding bike. You might want to throw it in your car um, around here um, where you have to park uh, downtown and you have to pay for parking. It's great to uh, bust the bike out of the trunk and take with you. We also found that the longer we keep the bikes in the trunk of the car, the more likely we are to have impromptu bike rides wherever we go. Uh, so we might stop and if we've got some time to kill, we'll break the bikes out and take them for a spin. The other thing I like about the bike um, and having it with me all the time, um, I don't like leaving bikes locked up out on the street. Definitely not in San Francisco where they'll cut the lock and take the bike. But even here in Louisville, Kentucky, where that's not actually a problem at all. Uh, we do have weather and things, so it's always nice to have the bike right by your side. Um, I've made a few upgrades on mine that I'm going to cover in this video as well. Um, and one of the biggest upgrades being the Brompton B67 uh, saddle, which is a sprung saddle, which makes up for a little bit of the hard ride of the Brompton. Uh, bike's about 30 to 35 pounds, depending on accessories. And I'm going to walk you through the fold and unfold now. I'm going to unfold it at once, just full speed. And then I'll do it again with video cuts of each thing that I'm doing in case that's what you're wondering, how to fold and unfold the Brompton. So first, it's handlebars up and everything has a really nice, just uh, big plastic thumb screw. Um, then you take the seat up. Now my seat height, uh, I did do the extended uh, seat post, not the one with the telescoping, but I think I get just an extra inch or two out of that. Um, and then there's the Brompton flip, which happens like that. Um, and then you tighten the last main tube stay up and you're good to go. Um, total time, once you get the hang of it, I mean, less than a minute, uh, you can watch some of the fastest flips and unflips or folds and unfolds on YouTube as well. Um, again, this is a three speed internal hub. I've been real happy with this. Uh, if you order it in San Francisco, you might have it geared down a little bit in the front, which essentially just means getting a smaller chain ring on the front, make it easier to pump up the hills. When we moved back to Louisville, I went back to the standard size chain ring, and now I have both. It's a quick and easy change, nothing technically happening other than the size of the front chain ring. Um, so what I'm gonna do is fold it back up now, um, show you the first is the parking mode, which there's a switch here, very easy to grab with my pinky finger, and I flick the wheel underneath it, and I'm in the kickstand mode. Uh, you'll notice I just cranked these back, um, that's so that when I do the next step of the fold, I can fold that front wheel back in and hook it on to this uh, stay here. And there is a little uh, plastic with a piece of metal in it that acts as the hook for that. And it happens just like this. That's probably the, the trickiest little fold there is keeping your arm straight while this goes back and forth. That took a little while to get the hang of, but less than a week for sure. The last uh, step where the last major fold is your handlebars will flick down and again there's a little latching system there uh, my bell is a little bit louder I'll cover that upgrade in a moment and then by moving the seat post down it locks everything into place and you can lift the whole bike up and you're ready to go I'm not what you would call a strong man and I can lift it up pretty easily uh, and carry it with me wherever I need to go I don't carry it for blocks and blocks on end if I'm gonna pushed around a store. Um, that's what the rear rack with the easy wheels is really nice for. Uh, you can go in the shopping cart mode and push it around and everybody will look at you quite funny. Um, so now I'm gonna slow the video down. We'll do some cuts of each step I'm gonna do. Um, 
and do the fold again. So it's first is the, put them down. First is handlebars up, cutting now to the close up of the thumb screw. Then it's seat post up about wherever you want it. You'll get the hang of that pretty easily. And then it's the big flip and you're in business. And the last one is tightening the main stay down. Okay, so that's the Brompton folding and unfolding of the M3R. You can stop watching now if you don't care about accessories. So the first accessory I wanna cover are the pedals. Um, the Brompton folding pedals are great if you're really worried about those three or four inches. If not, I highly recommend swapping in some uh, Shimano's. The thing that I like to do is do a flip-flop pedal. Um, I'll link to these in the video below. Um, these are available on Amazon or Nash Bar pretty easily. What I love about them is they have a standard SPD clip on the one side and flats on the other. So if I'm just around town and I didn't bring my clips, um, I use the flat side. If I'm going for a longer ride, 20 to 30 miles, a lot of times I'll wear my fancy cycling shoes and clip in. Um, seat upgrade, highly recommend uh, for the classic British look, one of the Brompton saddles. I do like the sprung saddle. It gives me a little bit of extra um, cushion as I roll and this is the B67. It's an affordable saddle and looks just so handsome on the Brompton bicycle. Um, other upgrades that I've done um, are the Ergon GP2 handlebars. I'm gonna zoom in close here and you'll notice that you do have to cut these a little bit with a razor blade to get them to fit, but they will fit and these little bar ends are just super great for pumping up hills. Um, obviously lights, the most significant upgrade, surprisingly, that I don't hear about in videos is the water bottle cage. I highly recommend getting a soft um, water bottle holder here. This is called the Bushwhacker. Um, again, linked below. Uh, what's nice about this is no matter how you fold it or where you lay it in your trunk, you're not gonna damage it. Um, and it doesn't scratch the bike. So if you had a stiff uh, water bottle holder on your top tube or your handlebar tube, um, you're likely gonna break that off at some point. The other thing I like about it is because it's adjustable, you can fit your coffee in it as well. Um, and maybe it's a little dirty, but because it's fabric, it actually soaks up any coffee spills that might drip down on your bike. Um, obviously, I've done the lights. Um, feel free to choose your own there. Um, I'm gonna zoom in on a couple that I got here um, that don't actually affect the fold. Most lights, I can't see where they would unless you get one of the huge torches on your top bars. Um, the bell, the Brompton bell, is very classic. I went for a little bit louder bell while cycling in San Francisco. Um, and it was also another classic look. Um, one thing that I don't see a lot of videos covering is whether or not you can use a child carrier with this. Um, I've looked at a variety of different child carriers. There's some that clip on right here, like a second saddle you can see coming from Singapore and other places. What I actually did was we upgraded to the Honeybee trailer and I couldn't find anybody who had really pulled a trailer with a Brompton. Um, I do it. I think it does great. Uh, the trailer does ride obviously a little bit lower. Um, I flipped the Honeybee hitch um, upside down on my Brompton to just give it a little bit of extra height. It seems to hold fairly well. Now over time, it does go in at a little bit of an angle, so I'm sure you could argue it would wear the, I guess, hitch out on the trailer side a little bit faster than um, a standard size bike, but the Brompton does fine pulling it. Um, the center of gravity is low on this. Well, when you're on it, it's high, but as it pulls, um, it's pulling from the actual hub, so you're not pulling from your saddle and pulling you back or anything like that. Um, and I pull my 50 pound um, kid around no problem and we have a great time we get a lot of funny looks wherever we go but it's worth it the honeybee trailer folds up as does the Brompton so everything fits in the trunk nice and neat so that's my review of the Brompton M3R this is a 2013-14 model um, so I'm sure there's a few upgrades since then but one of the best things about Brompton is the classic styling that never goes out of style if you have any questions feel free to post it below subscribe to my channel um, and thanks for your time.